Today I will introduce with you one of the most popular and growing block editor page builder called Spectra. The most exciting part is it's completely free and also it comes with a lot of advanced features and creative block item with the Aspector editor which are not available in most of the free page builder that are available on the WordPress directory. So today I will share with you every single block item from Aspectra and I will describe with you one by one. However, let me highlight few of the best or my most favorite uh, features from the Aspectra. Aspectra comes with full flexbox layout features it has copy and paste style you can change or you can copy style from any block and paste it anywhere or any block it has almost more than 100 plus templates library you can just import and start building your website built-in contact form you do not have to use any third-party plugin for creating contact form it comes with advanced conditional logic which has so many features that you can include inside your page responsive layout and built-in seo features if you are familiar with the schema markup then it comes with a built-in schema markup and built-in so many other seo features 28 unique and creative block item and many more features that i will share with you in this video if you want to take your block editor experience to the next level then I highly recommend you to complete this video. However, if you want to understand the basic block and default full site editing WordPress theme, then you can follow my another playlist. I have a complete playlist regarding the basic block editor with uh, how the full site editing works with the latest WordPress theme. So I will attach the link into the descriptions here or you can find on the eye icon. And uh, you can follow that video if you are not familiar with the block editor and if you are completely new. I highly recommend you to complete that series tutorial first. After that, you can start this one. Let me introduce myself. I am Riyadh, a web developer and designer. I create WordPress tutorial on this channel. If you are new to this channel and if you think this channel is helpful for you, then please hit the subscribe button and press the bell notification icon so that when I upload any new video, you will get notified. So without further any delay, let's jump into my computer. To practicing the Aspectra, I have installed and activate the Astra theme inside my local server. So you can use any kind of theme with the Aspectra plugin. So currently I have to install the Aspectra as well. So I'm going to dashboard navigate to the plugins and click on add new. And search here Spectra. then click install now and make sure this is created by brainstorm force and it's called wordpress gutenberg blocks spectra created by brainstorm force now click on activate after activating the spectra it will take you to their welcome page and the welcome page and the aspect of settings is placed under the settings item so under the settings tab here you can see on the left side the aspect button and when you navigate here it will take you to this page if you go to dashboard and as you can see there is no aspect menu inside the dashboard here but when you hover over the settings here you can see the aspect i'm going to click over here again and as you can see this is the welcome page and inside the welcome page here you can see some extra information related to the spectra the first one on the right side is knowledge base if you want to learn more about spectra from their documentation you can follow the knowledge base from here by clicking on the browse now and if you stuck anywhere if you have any questions suggestions or anything that you'd like to get support from the team then you can simply click on get support and they have dedicated team members they will help you to resolve your query and also you can join the facebook community which is created by spectra and it is very helpful for you to get update information and help from other experts now on the top left here you can see the welcome and the blocks and extension tab and then settings tab 
So now I'm going to click on blocks and extensions. So when I click on blocks and stack extensions, here you can see all other blocks that is coming with the spectra. You can deactivate all of them by clicking the deactivate all button here. So currently, as you can see, it's all deactivated and you can activate one by one, which is necessary for you. So let's say for an example, you want to use few items from here, container, call to action, and Lottie animation, and also the spectra form. So you can only activate them from here and you can keep deactivate other items that are not, you're not going to use them. So it will help you to keep your code neat and clean. And also uh, it helps a lot to optimize your website speed. So I'm going to activate all of them as of now because I would like to use all of them and like would like to show you how the Spectra works. So if you want, you can also view the live demo by clicking on the live demo here. So here you can see the live demo and it looks like this. So you can get some more specific additional information when you click on the live demo area. And you can go through them one by one and you can uh, change certain things inside your editor and you can learn uh, by yourself as well. So they have well documented and uh, pretty complete uh, documentation inside their website. Now I'm going back to the Spectra settings here. So there are a couple of other things that you have to take a look at here. The core, creative, when I click on any tab from here, it will display those specific blog items related to the uh, heading here. So basically when I select form, it will display the form item. You do not have to use any additional form plugin for adding a contact from inside your website. Using Aspectra, it comes with the default form features that you can use inside your website. So if I click on the live demo here, so here you can see the form that is using Aspectra. You can view the form preview here, the possibilities and the features that you're going to using on their form. So it's very helpful. You can also use the capture as well. Now, if I go back to the Aspectra again, here you can see SEO extension and other features. So inside the extensions, they have currently three extensions and hopefully they will add more extensions in the future to extend functions and features more inside the Aspectra. And there are other options that I am going to show you one by one on this tutorial. So if I click on the settings here, there are a couple of different things that you have to understand. It's very important. So first of all, the editor settings. The editor is currently 1200 pixel and you, if you want the same settings from Asta customizer and the Aspectra, then here you can see the current content width is applied from Astra theme because the Astra has the default 1200 pixel, which is the content width. And that's why it's displaying here 1200 pixel and the container padding is 10 pixel by default and the block editor spacing is zero. So it's currently looks like this. So if you take a look at here, a couple of other information, the collapse panel, the copy paste style, the automatic block recovery. So if you want, you can enable this feature as well and you can disable the other features. So if I go to asset generation and also the, before going to navigate to the asset generation, there is other things that you might confuse. What is the, what is the, copy paste style what is the collapse panel so i will show them when i navigate to the editor so let's click on asset generation here you can see the file generation currently the aspect loads the css and js in line on the page by default if you want to generate separate css and js file for aspect blocks you can simply enable these options for more information you can always read their documentation from here and the asset generation, you can uh, regenerate the assets as well here. If I select on templates, so here you can see the enable templates button. If you want, you can disable the template button from the editor. And the version control is also one of the most favorite features that I really like. So if you stuck anywhere, if you face, face uh, any um, issue with the current version, you can always roll back to the previous version from here. And also there is a beta version options that when we are releasing any beta version, you can test it from here. Performance. 
The performance is another tab that I really like personally. You can load Google Fonts locally by clicking over here. So I'm not going to load as of now and it will like uh, it saves your time. It saves uh, Google page speed insight results on your optimization. So while you are optimizing your page speed, make sure you have load Google Fonts locally. And also you can only see allow selected fonts from here let's say you'd like to use uh, Arial or Helvetica so you can only select a few fonts from here easily so I'm not going to change as of now now click on the block setting here so you can easily use the recapture you can paste the site version kit Two. so recaptcha version 2 or you can use recaptcha version 3 if you want to know more about the recaptcha you can always click over here and read the documentation from recaptcha so currently it's my account i'm not going to disclose this one as of now and let's click on coming soon to see so there is another great features in few cases we are using a third party plugins to use or enable the coming soon features so using the aspect you do not have to use a third party plugins to activate the coming soon features because they have the built-in options you can simply enable this one and you can simply choose any page that you'd like to display as a coming soon template and it saves automatically so i'm using sample page here and if i just visit website copy the url Take a look at incognito mode. So currently, as you can see, it's displaying a coming soon page. I just selected the default page and it looks like this. So I will be showing you every single steps on this tutorial regarding the spectra. So stick with this video. Let's move into the next part. now it's time to explore the aspectra block item so first of all i'm going to create a page from pages and type here taste page as of now so i'm going to clicking on the astro icon here to make it full width content layout and click on sidebar i'm not going to use sidebar select no sidebar and click publish so you can view the page i'm going to open a new tab here so the page is completely blank and it looks like this so I'm going to hide the title here as well so I'm just clicking on the eye icon and click on update here again reload the page so it's completely blank page let's click on the plus icon or the toggle block inserter icon here so at the first uh, section here you can see it's called spectra so inside the spectra here, you can see all the spectra blocks. So if I take a look at here one by one, there is a lot of blocks here and all of them are really helpful and related to the spectra. Now, if I scroll down, there is some other block called text, media, design, and widgets. So if you're not familiar with all the default WordPress Gutenberg block item from here, I have a complete series tutorial regarding the full site editing inside my channel. You can follow that tutorial to understand how the WordPress full site editing works and how all the default block item works with the default WordPress theme. And in that tutorial, I explain every single item in depth. So if you are not familiar with the block item, then I highly recommend you to complete that block tutorial first and then watch this series tutorial related to the spectra now let's take a look at the container here so i'm going to click over here so when i click here it's directly placed inside our content area i can also drag it and drop it here so there's two different ways that you can follow now i'm going to click on the toggle or the cross icon here so here you can say have added to block which is uh, basically not a block, it's just two layout I just added here. So I can delete or choose one of them from here. Let's choose this one. 
and here i'm going to use three column here the first one has only one column and the other has two column the another has two column so now if you want to use anything inside the container block area there are a couple of different things to understand the container block i'm going to select here and then going to click on the gear icon and here you can see the container block comes with a flex box features so if i take a look at one by one then here you can see it has some presets that you can use and currently it's not visible because there is no content inside the container area so i will show you later on with a real project so if i click on container here you can see you can change the container width to full width then box layout custom width and you can set the custom width as well and also i'm going to use full width as of now and here you can see the height you can set the minimum height as well so if i click here as you can see it's changing the height so i'm going to reset it as of now and here you can change the tag as well so currently it's selected deep you can choose header you can choose footer or any kind of tag here and the overflow is visible for the flex property it looks like this so i'm going to add something here and we'll show you how the flex properties work to understand the flex properties inside the container area so i'm going to delete the below one from here as of now and currently as you can see it has only one column and the flex properties has some additional information here and i will show you step by step so first of all i'm going to add something here so let's add or let's click on the plus icon to see the preview let's add info box close here so i can drag and drop it here so i have added one info box here let's duplicate this one by clicking on these three dot or it's called options so i'm going to duplicate this one and you can also use shortcut uh, key from here so you can press command shift d so if i press command shift d as you can see it's duplicated so i'm going to remove this one so again let's click over here and here you can see duplicate click duplicate and again duplicate and you can duplicate it again here and it looks like this so basically when you duplicate this uh, we have one column we do not uh, choose any other column here we can basically choose column but i'm not going to use column as of now there is a lot of reason that when i'm going to show you on a live project you will be able to understand um, why i choose or why you should choose um, flex box layout now i just select four row here and if i go to flex box so first of all i have to select the container area from here i can always view uh, on a list item as a when i click on the list view and i can view this format here always but as of now i'm going to close this one and when i select the container area and on the right side here you can see the flex property the flex property has four direction the first one is row the second one is column the third one is row reverse and the fourth one is column reverse so if i select the row here as you can see all or any item that you have added inside the container will be displaying as a one row so let's say i have added it was previously it was added a four row when i select column here so it was added four row as a row and when i select row here it's displaying into a one single row and this is how useful it is now if you take a look at here align items to understand the align items um, you have to add something so i'm going to so i'm going to take a another flex box or another container area to explain the align so before going to explain i would like to add a heading here 
so let's type here heading and add here so let's take a look at here here i'm using the row and align items so we can name it row align items justify content row align items justify content click here again and see direction is row then align items is center and then justify content center so align items center justify content is center and also wrap is currently no wrap so this is the our uh, first setting that we are using here so i'm going to create a couple of different uh, sections and we'll explain the flex box in a better way now let's duplicate this one and slash then type here container so i'm going to take again a single column layout here and click on the plus icon take info box so here you can see i have added one info box i'd like to duplicate this one let's select the container area again and scroll up choose container and add a minimum height let's say 400 or 500 pixel and add a background color so that you can easily understand where i'm navigating so i'm going to add this color here now let's take a look at our flex information to understand how flex box work close the container from here click on flex properties and make sure you have selected the container area so inside the flex properties currently it's selected here the column i'd like to select the row from here and the most important thing is align items so when i click on flex start it's start displaying content from top when i select here the flex center inside any kind of content inside the container will be displaying at the center when i select flex end it will display inside the flex item or any kind of item inside the container area at the bottom of that container and when i select here the stretch it looks like this uh, the stretch uh, basically it stretch the area so when i select stretch and hover over the info box here you can see a area uh, is stretch inside the whole container area so when i choose the center you can see the border or the area is only on a specific uh, based on the content area i hope you understand now if i take a look at the justify content item here so basically to understand the justify content section you have to choose column and currently as you can see i am using column and i can explain you in this way to exactly how the justify content work so when i select here the justify flex start the content area start displaying from start and when i select center it will display center and bottom so you all know that right but when i select space between that means it only create space between the item here so let's select here so as you can see there is a huge space between the info box right and when i select here space around so that means it will create space around the info box and it will make this space around all over uh, corner let's say left top right and bottom is similar both of the uh, info box items so let's select space around here it looks like this and when i select here space evenly so as you can see it's 
space evenly inside the info box. Let's choose or add additional info box here. Duplicate. And here you can see it's displaying here perfectly in this way. So if I remove this one so that you can understand uh, how the flexbox work. So there are a lot of real example that we are going to learn in the future on this channel uh, related to the flexbox where I will show you on a real life project how the flexbox effect, how the flexbox is helpful on a real life project. So if you take a look at some other settings here, let's take a look at here inside the container I have already explained you let's navigate to the style so currently I am explaining you the contained or uh, the container block item and inside the container block item inside the style tab here you can see some other features currently uh, you have uh, okay let's change the layout so that I can share with you let's change it and make it center and go to the style and here you can see currently I'm using the color. So if you want, you can use gradient. It's very useful, right? You can change the gradient color. So currently they have uh, only default two colors. So if you want, you can change the gradient color. You can change the linear to radial. And there is a lot of options that you can use. So let's say you'd like to add another color here. Just click over here. Or you can drag it here and choose color so let's choose green color or any color let's let's choose this one now as you can see that it looks completely different so when I click on this plus icon again I can choose red color when I click anywhere inside here it will add another property here let's choose green or something like that so now as you can see there are three color options so you can add more here it's very useful so you can drag it to the left to understand how the color effects here so if you want you can add more color here as well And if you want, you can remove any color from pointer. So let's select any of them from here and remove center point. So as you can see, it's just removed. And hopefully you understand how the gradient color works inside the container. Now, if I go to in other sections or if I want, I can completely remove the color by clicking on the clear tab here. So if I click on clear, it's completely removed. And let's click on the color it only the color inside the content area let's change the text color first so it's very useful you do not have to change the text color individually one by one in previous version or previously we have to change color here one by one by selecting the info box but you do not have to change it one by one you can choose the container area and you can change the color whatever you want inside the container area it's very useful and if you want you can change the link color as well currently there is no link color let's add some button here again select container and take a look at here the link color i'm not sure if it's going to work or not it's working right now so the button is working as a link so that's why it's working now if I go to hover color here you can change the link hover color and currently if you want to change the button color it's uh, definitely you can change it but it's inside the info box item but I'm going to explain the container in this video not the info box in the info box uh, video series I, uh, I, I will have another video or in other sections for the info box later on let's take a look at here the box shadow or the border Currently, there is no border. You can use a border here as well. And you can use dotted. You can choose dash. You can choose dove. So there are a lot of border options that you can play around with here. So I'd like to select border none. And if I scroll down, 
here you can change the border radius as well so if i choose border solid and add the border width 4 pixel and border radius 30 so here you can see how it looks so this is just a random example and here you can change the border color as well so when i navigate to the box shadow here you can choose the box shadow as well so i hope you can see if i zoom out or if i just click on update okay first of all i would like to remove the border from here let's select none and here you can see the box shadow if i click on update and view the page so scroll down here you can see the box shadow is appearing here currently i'm using full width layout and that's why it looks like this if i choose the astra settings and choose the content box layout click on update and reload the page it looks like this so it's now visible and here you can see the box shadow is appearing perfectly so there are a couple of other presets you can use the box shadow from here and i'd like to use as of now full width stretch or full width content layout and again select the container go to gear icon and here you can see it's directly take us to the exact place where i have left i'm not sure if you have noticed this so i left the exact place is here the border i just select none and then i update and visit the page and now i just came back again and click on the gear icon and it takes me to the exact place where i had just left now if i go to or click on the box shadow here i can choose any box shadow i can choose any of them from here let's choose this one and now i can click anywhere anywhere inside um, the area or block item then it will take you to the exact place so currently i have selected the info box right so now if i just click on the container area it will take me to the box shadow i just select container and here you can see it's just take me to the box shadow area and previously it wasn't working like that so it's very very useful and great features you save a lot of time well let's, let's navigate to the next one you can change the box shadow manually from here you can change the horizontal you can change a vertical position as well so here you can change them manually and also you can remove them and choose the presets from here so if i scroll down here you can see the position you can add the box shadow inside or outside so if i set inside here you can see the box shadow is displaying inside the content area and if i select outside it's displaying outside the container area now let's remove the box shadow as of now and also remove the border and border radius so now it's time to explore the shape dividers so when i click on the shape dividers here you can see inside the shape dividers there's two tab called top and bottom so when you want to add shape dividers on top you have to select top and when you want to add shape dividers on bottom you have to choose bottom now let's choose top and select mountains so here you can see it's working perfectly here when i select bottom and choose wave so you can see it's working here i hope you understand you have a default shape dividers uh, some information and using a default shape dividers with uh, some presets you can change uh, the width height color and everything let's change the color let's change the width here height you can change the height you can also flip you can invert and bring to front so it's very useful and it comes with some additional features 
Now if I scroll down there is a, the last tab which is called spacing and inside the spacing here you can see the row gap it's it's very important and you have to understand exactly how the spacing work to understand the spacing I would like to show you here and delete this or, or keep this one first of all add some height here and then go to style and here you can see the spacing so let's say for an example i would like to space between the info box previously what we did we just select info box one by one and we have added margin left and right to add spacing but using the flex box properties you can easily make some space between the column here so when i drag here you can see it just added space between the column and it's very useful we do not have to um, add margin left margin right one by one right and it keeps the right side corner or the edge area uh, close to the um, area and just space between the column i hope you understand how useful it is and if i change the view the flexbox view let's change the view to row and then go to style again and here you can see the row gap basically the row gap creates gap between the row here so it's also very helpful now go back to the flex properties and change the view here and go to style again and the spacing here you can add the padding you can add margin as well and that's it if i go to the advanced setting inside the advanced there is display conditions so inside display conditions here you can see if you take a look at here and read the information above setting will only take effect once you are on the live page and not while you are editing so if i want to hide this page on user state user role or browser or operating system then i can easily do it so let's say for an example i would like to hide user state when i hide the logged in user so hide from logged in user so when i am a logged in user it should be hidden click on update and reload the page so as you can see the above content area is not visible so i just hide it for logged in user so if i just uncheck here click on update and reload the page it's not visible so if i go to the editor again and here you can see the responsive conditions uh, well there are a couple of other conditions that you can play around user role so you can choose user role when uh, any subscriber contributor author editor would like to see this or if you want to hide for them or visible any specific sections for them then you can do it and for the browser let's say you want to hide um, this section on safari browser click on update and this section is visible on chrome browser let's open copy the url and let's open the safari browser paste it here and as you can see it's still on coming soon mode so i have to disable the coming soon mode first go to the dashboard settings spectra and then settings coming soon and make it visible now now go to the safari browser and reload the page so as you can see it's still displaying the sample page here so here you can see i just paste the url that i have copied and as you can see if i go to our test website this content is visible on chrome so this is visible on chrome but it's not visible on safari browser it's very useful and in some cases 
we have to use these kind of features for our clients or our personal website and for this kind of features we have added previously custom code or any kind of custom third-party plugins but as of now you do not have to use any third-party plugins or custom code using aspectra you can easily do it so now if i choose any other browser let's say microsoft Edge or any other browser i can choose it from here and let's see there is operating system and currently i'm using ios so uh i'm using a mac OS. i'm sorry and you can hide mac OS for any specific sections or you can uh, hide any specific sections on android ios devices android devices or windows operating system or open bsd so you can do whatever you want from here almost inside display conditions there is a lot of features here and take a look at your responsive conditions here so you can hide this one on desktop tablet or mobile devices as well and jdx index sometimes we have to use jd index and here is the default settings that you can use for jd index and inside the advanced tab you can use html anchor for single page navigation it's very useful and here is the additional css classes you can add additional css class as well so that's all from the container and in most of the blog item has style general and advanced features and in most of them has similar kind of options so in our in in our next part or next blog explanation video i'm not going to show you everything that i have already shown you here so let's move into the next block item. Let's remove the block item and sections from here. Uh, or let's remove the container and heading from here because we have already explained this one. And now it's time to take a look at here click on the plus icon or you can click on browse all from here or you can click over here the next one is called heading so if i just drag and drop it here here you can see heading so there is two heading i would like to use, remove this one from here let's select the heading and on the right side here you can see the alignment you can place it left center or right and here you can see a toggle options if i just close this one the heading will be hidden and if i just want to make it visible just click over here and here you can change the heading tag to h1 to h6 and also you can convert it to p or div I would like to use h1 as of now and in case if you want to use subheading you can click over here and it will display the subheading options where you can add the subheading let's add or type something this is subheading let's make it center and it looks like this if you scroll down here you can see another options called separator and you can choose any kind of separator from solid to dotted let's choose solid the solid separator looks like this so this is the general options from heading if you want to explore the style just click on style from here and inside the style there is the first one is heading and inside heading is called typography you can change the font weight font style and transform and even decoration you can change it so let's change the font weight to 800 change the style to italic or oblique so you can change it i'd like to use the default one as of now and transformation you can use capitalize uppercase or lowercase so let's choose capitalize and the decoration is 
currently underline default the currently it's default you can use underline you can use overline and it looks like this so as of now i'd like to use default click on the pen icon again to close this one the most interesting part that i really like it which is gradient for the text color you can choose gradient color and currently gradient is very useful in many cases and many websites you will be able to uh, or you will see the gradient color so it's the same features you can add additional color by clicking on the plus icon here to in add or include additional color so you can also remove any color from here as well just click over here click remove control it will remove the color you can also add custom color by clicking on the show detail input here you can paste your own custom color as well so i'm not going to use any custom color as of now so the gradient feature has some other information that you can take a look at here so when you select linear or radial you can choose radial as well you can choose linear i'd like to clear okay before clear you can take a look at here the position so you can change the angle of the gradient here the text shadow you can add the text shadow before going to add let's choose a color and here you can see the text shadow so let's reduce the blur change it and you can place it anywhere based on your design and requirements and bottom spacing is include the spacing between the subheading and the primary heading so inside the style there is another options text color for classic the classic is very simple when you select classic it will remove the gradient so currently the classic is here and i change settings inside the text shadow and that's why it's appearing a little dot which is a blue circle icon here so that means it's indicate us that i have or we have changed the information in these settings so if i reset everything let's reset from here and as you can see it's nothing so it's not displaying the dot icon here it's just removed that means currently we didn't add anything here and we are using the default style from here if i add color and here you can see we have added the color and inside the color this reset button is highlighted so when i it's when it's highlighted that means we have add something here or change the color and when it's looks like this not clickable that means we didn't change anything else here let's remove or let's add some color here scroll down here you can see the bottom is spacing and that's similar let's navigate to the separator the separator is this one which is weight you can use percentage as well you can increase the thickness you can add bottom spacing and you can also change the subheading typography color so the typography is similar i'm not going to explain the typography again and again but i'll show you if is there any new additions inside here click on the link it's similar highlight which is not similar as of now so when we select the highlight here you can see highlight heading text from the toolbar to see the below control working let's highlight let's choose any text from here and click over here so here you can see highlight so i can change the text color or background color here so i have uh, selected the color here and if i go to the highlight the background color 
I can change it from here somehow it's not working maybe I have selected here that's why so I can clear and just select the highlight and see whether it's working or not it's not working so somehow there is a, a bug or any other workaround with the highlight currently it's not working as expected but if I select or highlight from here it's working from here I can change the background I can change the text from here easily and choose the background color so as you can see my highlighted text color and background looks like this let's remove this one as of now and change the background color also clear clear now select the heading again and scroll down here you can see padding border and the background so if I choose any options from here it will apply the complete heading area it will apply all the heading area and I can easily use gradient as well but in most cases um, we do not use background and the spacing is similar to the padding and margin here and if I go to the advanced it's similar and we already know how the advanced settings work let's remove the heading and click on the plus icon again and here you can see the image block when I choose and drop it here it directly asks me to upload a media library or insert from URL so I'd like to use the media library there is no image as of now let's choose an image from here let's choose this one select here and as you can see the image looks like this so there is a couple of things that you have to understand when you are using image first of all I'd like to reduce the width here so when you select image here you can see on the top it's displaying the image icon and here is a drag options and navigation and you can change the image align center you can add link and here you can see the crop features and there is another options apply due tone filter if I click over here change any filter it looks like this so you can change the filter and uh, you can add different filter here it's very useful and you can change the color as well you can change the highlight as well currently uh, I'm not going to use any of them so I'd like to clear this one so when I select image on the right side here you can see the block the first one is general and inside the general you can see the image then there is options for alignment so you can change the alignment from here or, or you can change the alignment from general the layout is normal if I choose overlay it looks like this and you can add heading and caption this is very useful and I personally like these features let's what are you thinking so I just added this text from here as I add, uh, from overlay I can change the position as well it's great right so let's remove our let's take a look at here normal I'm not going to use overlay you can change the size from thumbnail medium full size you can even um, specify the size here by changing the value directly you can add alternative text as well and the object fit is very important you can use this one to cover the, your image into the whole container area 
feel and contain so currently um, it's not a good example to view or show you here but uh, there is some other ways where i will show you and you can change the object information on other small devices so on hover image currently if i hover there is nothing but if i hover you can change zoom in slide grayscale blur let's choose zoom in and here you can see it's zoom in slightly and when i select slide you can see it's slide and if i click or enable caption currently there is no caption as of now but here you can add caption if i click over here the caption is now visible uh, disabled here and the mask you can mask or you can change your image shape circle or you can change it diamond hexagon rounded so you do not have to change the image in your photoshop and upload it here you can change it from here directly it's very very useful and awesome features in many cases it was very necessary for all of us to use this kind of shape inside our website and now the most important things here you can use custom shape as well so you can use custom mask image as well and you can change the mask size position repeat options as well so it's very useful and hopefully and now let's take a look at here style i'm not going to use any mask as of now go to style and basically it's similar the style has border radius margin and it's nothing it's similar here so there is nothing to show you as of now if i go to the advanced it's also similar there is nothing new to share with you here let's remove the image block from here as of now and reload or change the layout here or just click on update and reload the page and then click on the plus icon the fourth one is buttons so if i drag it and drop it here the button is pretty similar to the default button so if i click on the gear icon here you can see some presets so the presets saves your time and also it help us to generate some quick idea for buttons or any other block item and it's useful if i choose this one it looks like this if i choose this presets it looks like this let's choose this one from here and also you can add icon as well so when i select this one it comes with the icon here and this one so as you can see the presets are very useful and helpful for us to save time and currently the background button color and the hover color is displaying from our customizer settings now if i go to the content here you can see the icon you can enable and disable the icon when i select the next button inside the content the icon is disabled here that's why there is no icon but when i select the first one from here it has icon you can change the icon to any icon from here sorry click over here again and let's change it to any other icon you can type here search here and use from here so let's choose another one this one and you can also if you scroll down before after you can place the icon position before the text or after the text change the link from here and also if you want to open 
in a new tab you can enable this one you can add no follow if for affiliate website when we refer to any affiliate link we always choose no follow because it's not good to track those link for google or basically uh, google is not like uh, this kind of a uh, huge affiliate link inside a post so if i click over here it's remove the text you can use the button uh, in this way using only icon this is very useful features i really like this one and if i go to style it has the same features that takes typography icon color so if i take a look at here the text is normal and hover color text then if i choose icon here the icon size you can increase the icon size and it's uh, svg format so it will not going to show the blurry icon it will display perfectly here increase the icon spacing change the color here so you can change the icon color icon hover color as well and if i click on the background it's transparent right now but on hover it's colored if you want you can use gradient on hover or you can use color you can use transparent on hover as well so currently it's on hover and color color and if i go to normal it's transparent if i select color it looks like this so you have to change the taste color as well from here by changing or clicking over here so i'm not going to use the color options as of now i'd like to use uh, and from background i'd like to use transparent and the text color should be this one okay let's go back to the background again and we just covered our background then click on border currently the border width is one pixel top left right and bottom you can increase or you can remove this one so i just removed from here it's displaying the default button border i can select here zero to remove completely so there is no border and the radius you can change it the box shadow you can add the box shadow here so you do not have to use a custom box shadow if you are using the presets so if i click here again you can take a look at here there are a couple of other presets that you can use for your border so this is very light and very um, smooth uh, box shadow you can change the box shadow position and make it custom change the position uh, outset and inset also and here you can see the spacing the spacing is always similar now if you want you can add uh, additional button here so i can simply click on the plus icon it will add button automatically here before going to show you you have to understand here one thing so this is the button group when i click over here there is three button and when i use or select any button here you cannot add another button but when you select the button group here here you can see the plus icon and when you select any of the button there is no plus icon to add additional button here so let's select the buttons and click on the plus icon here you can see it's added another button here and if i close this one click on the button area or buttons group here you can see some other specific information so i will talk about later the spectra copy paste style and it's useful let's copy this button style and paste it here so here you can see inside the style i have added few things here on this button and when i copy from here it will copy only the style tab and paste it here it will not going to copy the general or advanced settings it will only copy the style settings and you can simply copy and paste your style settings from any blog to your 
any other block it's helpful and now if you want you can delete the button by clicking on the remove button here and if you want you can change the button alignment let's select the button group here and here you can see align left center right and here you can see it's displaying the full weight or the justify area it's also useful and uh, in some cases we have to struggle a lot to display button in this way and the spectrum makes it very useful for all of us that you can use easily let's choose it again and then here you can see stack orientation you can change uh, on stack on desktop okay first let's take a look at here you can change on tablet you can change on mobile devices but as of now it's selected none it will be working automatically you can increase the gap between here the button size if you want you can use large you can use extra large or medium or large it's very simple if i go to a style you can change the button typography all of them together from here but if you want you can change it individually and the spacing is similar here let's remove the style from here as of now and the advance is also similar there is nothing um, here to explain you as of now so that's all for the button let's move into the next block let's move into the next block from here so first of all i'd like to remove the buttons and click on the tool here you can see the info box now it's time to explore the info box here so i'm going to drag and drop it here so currently uh, it looks like this and let's duplicate okay so before duplicating the info box i think i should take a container here let's take container you can choose any of the uh, options from here so currently I, I would like to use only single info box and duplicate so we all know that already how container works i would like to change the flex properties to this direction now let's start working on info box so when i select the info box or click on the info box area here you can see the info box is selected and there is some presets that you can use always and also you can change them manually let's click on here so as you can see when i select the first preset it looks like this i can select second one third and fourth one so the presets saves our time and it just change instantly with additional style and features so now if i choose this one and here you can see some other options icon and image so you can use icon from the built-in library first of all if you take a look at here one by one you can enable and disable the icon or image so i'd like to use as of now and here you can see the position above title you can select it below title you can place left of title you can place right of title and also here you can see left of text and title so it's very useful and so in most of cases we have to use the info box in many places inside our website now as of now i'd like to use the above title and here you can see the icon currently it's displaying this uh, option here you can choose icon or you can choose image so when i select image you can click over here you can go to uploads 
or from download or anywhere you can upload image in that position so i'm not going to upload any image as of now i've just closed this one and choose an icon from here and the content area when i select content area you can change the content prefix or content alignment from here to left right center and also you can change the heading tag you can enable the prefix from by just clicking or uh, click on the toggle icon here and also you can enable and disable the title as well now you can change the title tag to h1 h2 h3 and h4 so there are a couple of tags that you can use and in case if you do not want to use the descriptions you can hide from here now i just enable the descriptions here and the separator it's solid double dash and couple of other options here i'm going to use none as of now and the call to action is basically your button so when i navigate to the call to action you can change the type none that means no button here you can choose text you can choose buttons you can choose complete box that means the complete box will be linkable and i would like to use text as of now and you can also place icon here let's search your arrow and choose this one so as you can see the icon looks like this let's choose button and the button also looks like this you can also change the button presets as well So now if I click over here again and I scroll down inside the buttons when I select the button there are a couple of other information there are button button icon here button icon position icon spacing and open in a new tab you can delete the button icon by clicking on the cross icon here now that's it from the info box general setting and now if I go to the style here you can see the style so currently the view the first one if you if i just close here you can see all the style features you can change the icon or image from here you can change title description call to action and spacing so when i select image or icon here you can change it to stock or frame so you can choose uh, both of them you can also change the shape to a square or circle so let's change it default as of now and here you can see the icon weight here and the color let's change it to this one and the padding bottom if i add padding bottom here you can see it's increase the spacing between the icon here icon and the title now if i scroll down here you can see the title so the title is refers to info box i can change the title color then typography margin padding so it's kind of similar like other block feature or the like other block style let's take a look at the other options and see what is new here so here you can see the background basically it only applies the button area and it's inside the call to action so inside the call to action there is only button here so let's change the color to white color and here you can 
change the border as well if I close there is a border style width radius and color so the last one is spacing you can add padding margin spacing here but there is one thing that I really wanted to use which is background color inside the info box area so if I take a look at here closely there is no options currently as of now to add background color inside the info box area I hope the inspector team will add these features very soon but as of now if you want you can use custom CSS so if I go to style and see um, there is no options as of now there should be an options for background color on the info box but if I go to advance here I can add additional classes custom PG and click on update here view the page and it looks like this I can inspect here and then I can simply select and here you can see let's take a look custom BG here you can see the class called custom BG this one copy the class from here and then click over here paste the class and add a dot then you can add background color hash so here you can say I have added a background color and I can add padding 20 pixel so it looks like this so if I just want to use this one globally then what I can do I can simply open the customizer settings from here and paste the additional CSS here click publish and reload the page now as you can see the background color is added here using custom CSS and I would like to use the background color in case uh, here then or any other block I can use let's say I would like to use it here go to advance and place additional bg here and reload the page so here you can see the background color is added here as well but I think um, I hope they will add the background color options in the future let's move into the next one if is there any other options here so I can simply what I can do I can simply copy so if I copy the style and paste it here it will only paste the style right but it will not paste our general settings here so when I want to use general settings or read more button I have to use it from here click on update and reload the page now it looks like this but it doesn't have the background color this one what I can do I can simply go to advance and paste the custom BZ update and reload here it looks like this so what I can do I if I want to increase the spacing between them I can simply select the container go to flex container and make sure I have selected the row and go to the style then spacing and here you can see the column gap let's add 60 pixel click on update and then reload the page so as you can see it's added 60 pixel here and this is how it works now it's time to move into the next one 
remove the existing one from here and then click on the plus icon and here you can see the number six is call to action click and drop it here close this one so when i select the call to action here you can see some presets so i can use this one or this one and the most important thing is here which is layout and inside the layout you can change the alignment as well and you can even change um, the other information so let's say you want to uh, select or stack on desktop tablet or specific devices then you can do it easily so for an example if I choose this kind of layout here and go to layout and choose none so here you can see the call to action is displaying here and you can change the content width here and which is very useful you do not have to use or take another column basically what we did previously uh, in our previous version in elementor or the ultimate add-on gutenberg we have to use column and it, it was not a uh, great user experience as well so currently it's working very smooth and it's very easy to change here click on update here and reload the page the call to action looks like this so we can easily reduce the content area here we can increase or you can change everything here from style tab now let's navigate to the button area you can change the button similarly as uh, any other button that we have used previously then later on additional button so when i click additional button or when i enable the additional button there will be added two button by default and this is how it looks with the additional button you can change the gap between the button as well then there is uh, nothing fancy and uh, no other additional settings and if i go to a style it's similar to any other style or block style so for descriptions and buttons then here you can see the additional button and spacing so that's it and the advance is also similar to any other advanced tab so hopefully it's helpful for you to understand how the call to action button or call to action works so basically you can change anything here if i select let's say i want to change the call to action heading go to style and here you can see the heading so i can change the heading size i can change the color everything go to general and choose the layout here you can change the heading tag as well let's see if we can add any image here so generally there is no options to add additional image or anything here as of now but hopefully they will add this in the future but if you want you can use this call to action inside the container area and add a background image so here is the container and you can add a background image you can add padding you can add many things and change uh, many information here let's change the container height here first change the style let's gradient make it update and view the page so now as you can see it looks like this so you can add um, image you can change uh, the font size of the button button size as well so there is a lots of possibility now let's move into the next block uh, let's delete this one from here and go to the toggle area or the blocks area and the number seven is block code let's drag and drop it here so before drop it here i would like to use container for better experience let's choose this one 
and drag and drop it here so here you can see the block code area and inside the block code area you can add author name let's say author Riyadh Mahmud and when I select the block code area on the right side here you can see the general which is first one is layout and it's there's a couple of things that you have to uh, understand it's new here so first of all the type is border when I select quotation the type will be changed to the quotation and it looks like this select again and the block code so here you can see the type is border right now I just choose the border you can add author image so let's add author image here let's add this one the author image looks like this and you can change the author image position to top right and left and when I select quotation on the layout here you can see the quotation and the author image is visible now let's choose border and I scroll down here you can see the Twitter icon here when I click Twitter icon you can use the Twitter name as well let's say riyadh.mahmud46 is my Twitter name and it's not visible here but it will be visible when you click tweet and I can view both icon and text so when I select icon here it will only display the icon of the Twitter but when I select only text it will be displaying text but when I select both it will display both of them the icon is style classic bubble link so you can choose bubble or you can choose classic as well the target URL is custom URL in case if you want custom URL then you can use custom URL or you can use a current page which is tweet now if I go to style the border style is solid as of now you can change the border style which is on the left side you can change to dotted you can change to dash but the solid is perfect at this kind of um, Twitter tweet area and in case if you want to change the icon style the icon size then you can do it easily including the typography and if I go to the quote quote typography and color author typography color and thumbnail size you can increase the image width by drag and drop this slider you can change the border radius to 0 or 50 percent and here is the spacing which is similar author image gap and the border quote gap so you can increase the gap between the quote and border as well from here so let's click on update and reload our page it looks like this so if I go to again the editor here it will take me to the exact place or the position that I left over so when I select uh, the block code it's taking us to the spacing section now if I go to the or closing a spacing there is nothing to describe here and go to advance it's similar now it's time to move into the next part let's delete this one from here first and click on the plus icon here and the next one is content timeline so if I just drag and drop it here it looks like this so first of all I would like to reduce the left column area so when I select the left column here I can change the container width to 10% and the right I would like to use 
ten percent and the rest or the middle area or the column is currently displaying 15% or 50% so I'd like to use AD right so when I increase it to 80 that means on the left and right is 10 and in total it's 100% so I can choose the timeline here I can add content I can add additional information here as well let's click over here on the first one is content timeline child so inside the child you can change the date and content here so if I this let's type it this is content area simple and very simple content area that's it so if i just choose the complete area here by clicking over here on the right side here you can see the additional information but when i select any specific area it only display the date of the content which is uh, displaying here let's choose this one so that means if you want to change the heading text and the paragraph text you have to change it from here and if i click on the complete or the container area basically it's block so let's select here again the timeline so when i select the timeline sometimes it's hard to select it from here and in that case you have to use the list view to select a specific section or a specific block item now i have selected this one and on the right side you can see the layout options the layout options comes with some additional features so let's click over here and see how it works when i select the orientation to the left it looks like this and the middle and the right it looks like this so text alignment you can also change the text alignment and you can select none as well the arrow alignment is top so here you can see the arrow is changing its position the top bottom center so you can choose any of them from here i'd like to use center the display date if you want to display the date you can enable this one or close this one the timeline item is the heading tag that i'm using timeline heading one if i choose heading one it will be displaying heading one heading two uh heading three it looks like this so the connector is displaying here the basically here i'm using the date and it's displaying here the calendar you can change the connector icon you can change the background size and the border and connector thickness as well let's make it six and see now if i close them and go to a style here you can see the padding so if i increase the padding you can see the padding is basically the padding applying top inside the content area okay let's select the list view again or the content timeline again from here let's click on this reset button and as you can see the padding is reset if i add 20 pixel it added 20 pixel on everywhere inside the content area and timeline marker marker gap is 10 so i can increase the gap and here you can see the timeline item gap you can increase and decrease the item gap as well and if i select the timeline items basically the and here you can see the bottom spacing description color typography and timeline border radius you can make it round you can change the border radius and there is options to change the background color here 
I really like the background color features here. Now if we take a look at here the date, the date color, typography. In the connector you can change the color as well. So there is a plenty of opportunity to change everything here and there. Let's add the background color to make it at least visible to the user. So this is how the timeline works and if I go to the advanced settings it's similar but if I choose any settings from here there is only date and the advanced has here the similar and hopefully you understand how the timeline works and how you can customize them. Let's move into the next block. Let's remove the timeline block from here so I can remove the child as well but I'd like to remove completely. And go to plus icon here. And the next one is frequently asked question, which is refers to FAQ schema to your page. And it's very useful for schema markup. And let's place it here. It's simple. You have to just add frequently asked question or random question for your visitor inside your blog po post or your content area and then you can add the answer and let's take a look how we can customize this one so when i select the complete area not the child one if i click over here you can see there is a frequently asked question and there is a child so always when you change something like presets style then make sure you have selected the parent not child and then on the right side you can see the presets and you can change to any presets from here let's select this one it looks like this okay now here you can say cannot select the parent from here so i have to select it by using the list view and let's change the presets to this one this one it looks pretty different here right and we can use them so i really like this one as of now and if i scroll down here you can see the general which is a layout you can use accordion layout you can use grid layout currently we are using accordion and if you take a look at here collapse other items so you can open other items you can expand only first item or you can also collapse the first item as well so enable the toggle and you can enable the schema support so it will um, support the schema so if i'm not familiar with the schema i will have another tutorial in the future where i will explain everything related to the schema markup enable separator it will add separator under the title it's very thin as of now and um, i cannot view also i hope you cannot also so if i click on the icon you can view the icon you can change the icon alignment left to right and that's it for the general if i go to style you can change or increase the row gap as well add border currently there is only one pixel and if i change color it looks like this so for the icon you can increase the icon size and i do not want to use the icon and border i just want to show you the question is typography the question is here let's change the question typography i can change it to any size here and the padding it looks perfect and the answer which is the answer box you can change the answer box as well so make sure I have selected again the frequently asked parent section here and here you can see the answer area. 
so that's it uh, for the parent area which is inside the style and the advanced is similar so if I go to the child what I can see inside the child I can see the only advanced tab here and nothing else all I have to simply change the text and title here from the child and there is nothing to change anything like color or anything here see if I click on the child second child or the last one you can view it how it looks so now there is a, another thing if you want to add additional child item so you can click on the plus icon here which is add FAQ or frequently asked child or you can click on the plus icon here and you can drag it and drop it here so when you select the child or, or the parent area you can only see the child item inside the block item but when I select anywhere excepting the parent area uh, or anywhere let's here and here you can see it's displaying other block area now let's close the toggle area here and if I click anywhere here you can see other information are visible now let's click on the child element and there is nothing to share with you as of now and that's it from the frequent last question section let's move into the next block let's remove this one first from here and go to the blocks area and the next one is form just simply drag and drop it here close this one so here you can see three default form so you can choose simple contact form you can choose newsletter or suggestion form so let's choose a simple contact form it looks like this again i would like to use another form okay so what i can do i can simply change the weed okay just keep it as of now and duplicate let's add another form here type here and choose form and select a newsletter form the newsletter form looks like this and now i can duplicate this one again and i would like to show you here uh, the default form how it looks and how it works and suggestion form so click on update and reload the page here so currently this is the contact form it comes with first name last name email and message and the second one is newsletter subscription form and the third one is suggestion form so it's useful and it comes with the default plugin here let's navigate to our design and style and understand how the form style works so before going to style uh, i would like to show you how you can create a form from scratch okay let's add a container i'd like to use this layout and type here form and here you can see i can simply click on skip and when i click skip it looks like this so let's uh, reduce the width here to 10 percent and then this one 
AD. Now it's time to understand the form style. So when I select the form, uh, not this one, I have to choose from here. And here you can see the form name, name, email, text area. So I can simply change all of them. So first of all, understand the form field here. So when I select form and then click on the plus icon, it should display the form field, but not, I'm not sure. Okay, so without here, I can simply click on the plus icon here. And here you can see the form field. So what I can do, I can click on browse all. When I browse all, you can only view the form field. The first one is name, email, hidden, phone number, text area, checkbox, radio, URL, and select block google date picker and accept so there are lots of options right let's remove the name here and add them one by one okay so i have to skip and it will take uh, again so you cannot start from blank but you can edit and customize them let's change it to first name last name is i think it's perfect so what i can do i can change it if i first name if i go to first name here it's displaying first name require i can change from here and i can see it's let's see if is there any options to make it to column there is no options to make it to column here as of now so let's change the style there are two presets this one and this one let's add something phone number and here you can see it's displaying the phone number with the uh, country code and this is really great feature let's click on update view the page and the last one here is the name first name last name phone number country email address and message you can delete the above form here so i just delete the other forms and let's work on it and add additional field here checkbox i can add checkbox let's see test test to add options test to and click on update so here you can see the test one test two it's working i can add additional features Let, let's add text area checkbox so it's not a tutorial how to create a beautiful functional form but it's a tutorial how we can use form so you can add let's say if you want to add a condition here you can add it here as well if i update and i'm going to change the preset to this one so that you can understand perfectly here you can see the toggle and it, you can add here terms and conditions so you can tell the user if you are agree with this then you can or something like that but as of now if i click over here let's take a look if is there any default uh, true state on false state off so it's uh, i think it's perfect as of now and you can just make it require so you can make a condition and then make it require so you can change the name here to based on your form requirements let's click over here again 
and date picker let's take a look how the date picker works you can just select here and type the date and you can choose calendar as well so let's click here again and see the accept so i have read the agree the policy this is uh, what i uh, have told you regarding the policy and if i drag and drop the url here is the url so it it looks really great and all of the necessary fields are available here and how the hidden works hidden name uh yes they can add their hidden name let's test hidden name not this one okay i think it's not changeable from here let's reload and there is nothing related to the hidden so the value we can add only inside the hidden now if i choose another field and choose so there is uh, everything we have checked the except the radio the radio is um, something that we have used previously click on update and see option on or two so that's it and let's take a look at some style inside the form and this is all the form field that is available right now when i select the form here you can see the general and general is the level which is spectra you can change the box style or underline you can change the overall alignment or uh, when you confirm or if you want a confirmation or uh, you can redirect to any other success uh, page or you can send this message to the user on the existing page and there are message text you can change it from here when you navigate to the submit button you can change the submit button alignment or you can change it to the different devices as well it's very useful and when i go to action here you can see it is required to enter an email id to receive the data submitted via form else you will not receive any data so here you can add your email address and the form subject you can add here you can add cc and bcc as well so google recapture it's a google recapture and you have to add the google recapture id inside the spectra settings so make sure if you want to use the recapture you have added the id inside the settings that i have described uh, on the first part on this tutorial go to style and let's take a look at here input style placeholder color so it's necessary and you can change every single style from here along with the submit button message typography so there is nothing additional here as of now let's navigate to the advanced it's similar so that's all for the form and hopefully uh, you can create form but the one thing that i would like to use or uh, i wanted to use basically the column features but as of now did they, they do not have the options to make column so hopefully in the future they will add a column options or column features so that's it let's move into the next part or the next block now let's move into the next part so i'm going to delete this one first from here and click on this toggle blocks item or the plus icon here and after the form here you can see it's now displaying the google maps i'm going to drag and drop it here so now inside the google maps it's displaying the brainstorm force location here 
when I click over here on the right side here you can see the page and the block so make sure you have selected the block here and then click over here again and here you can see this block uses Aspectors API key to display the map you don't need to create your own API key or worry about the renewing it so it's great you do not have to use or create your own API you can display the map using the API currently which is uh, added from Aspector team now as you can see the address is displaying here brainstorm force and right now I would like to display if I want to uh, change this address to Shotkira which is my location and here you can see it's uh, displaying a Shotkira new market you can add um, any specific address let's say uh, you want to add New York and I just added in Y so here you can see the New York USA and uh, you can specify let's say Brooklyn uh, Bridge Park so if I select Brooklyn Bridge Park here you can see it selected the Brooklyn Bridge Park and you can copy the address so basically I do not have any address as of now I'm just showing you the random address from here and as you can see when I copy and paste the address it's directly displaying here and what you can do you can zoom in and you can uh, adjust the height as well so it's very useful and you can also change the language to your own local language as well now if I go to the advanced here you can see the conditions and some other things that we already know that and that's all about the map if I take a look at responsive design the tablet it's fully responsive if I click on mobile device it also fully responsive and it's working perfectly right and that's it so I hope uh, you can easily use this uh, block inside your website. Let's move into the next part or uh, the next block here. I'm going to delete the map so I can press delete from my keyboard as well. If I want to delete anything very quickly, I can use short code. So let's click on the toggle here again. And here you can see the next one is how to. So I can simply place it here. And basically, this is uh, if you if you take a look at here and read the information from here, this is how to configure how to uh, in schema in Spectra. So to get started, you will just need to drag and drop how to schema block in Gutenberg editor. The how to schema block can be used on pages that contain a how to in their title and descriptions or describe steps to achieve certain requirements so basically uh, it's just a random information and when you create any how to post you can simply start typing here start describing here let's say for an example how to create extra header you can describe the steps here step by step and you can um, also mention uh, the total cost uh, or you can also mention the required tool certain things here easily and this is how how to block work so if you want you can also let's take a look at here if I click over here there is a steps you can add more steps here it's uh, useful I really like the features and uh, basically in most cases we are using these kind of features when we create a recipe blog or recipe post for our user or clients we uh, we used this kind of steps and features and um, there are lots of tutorial type content where we use this kind of features as well there is a couple of things that you can take a look at here if i take a look at here in general tab in general there is an image so if i upload image let's see how it looks it looks like this you can change the image size to full full width image as well you can change the image size to medium and also you can change it to thumbnail and if i scroll down here you can see the time you can add year you can add months days hours so how many uh, times or how many uh, hours or minutes or seconds it will take to prepare this recipe or the content or prepare your extra head or something like that you can also hide this uh, information as well now if i go to cost so if it's there is no uh, cost issue or if it doesn't cost anything then you can simply hide this one but if it's cost you additional uh, amount then you can easily disable uh, 
enable and disable from here let's take a look at tools you can use the number of tools here you can add as many as you want uh, for the required tools so that's it and there are some another thing which is material the number of material if i increase here you can see things you need to understand so basically it is very useful but as of now i do not have a real example to show you right now but when we are creating a new project or build a website from scratch from figma to gutenberg there i will show you exactly how to use certain things in a live project in a live uh, view and that will clear your uh, view of point uh, regarding or related to the gutenberg and spectra now it's time to move into the next one i'm going to remove this one from here click on the plus icon and here you can see its icon list and i'm going to place it here close this one so before going to use this one here i would like to add or change the view to box mode because it just uh, plays the edge of the uh, area inside the container so it looks like this the list item basically uh, useful for when we add featured when you add any list or any kind of uh, bullet point instead the bullet point you can use your own image icon here let's take a look at here first so when i select here you can choose all the list together you can change there is couple of presets you can use presets presets saves our time and also without using presets you can simply start changing one by one let's change the icon here let's choose a okay this one and if i now change the presets it looks much better right so now i'm not going to use presets i just i wanted to share with you so here you can see how to change the icon now if i select content you can place the content left right and uh, center the icon placement it's currently middle you can set it top and middle so why it's necessary to understand the top and middle if i go to lipsum.com and take some dummy content from here paste it here okay here. and now as you can see in many cases we have to use let's change the icon as well select okay select the icon list from here and change the icon from here first okay check so i'd like to use the check mark icon and now uh, the icon is check and i can simply click on the content and here you can see the icon alignment is middle when i select top as you can see it's instantly changed the view and sometimes we have to struggle a lot to place this icon on top middle and at the bottom but in most cases we have to struggle to place it on top and that's why it's there is an options to place this icon on the top and you can also make it or place it at the middle so the top is useful and i will uh, hope you understand how it works now if you take a look at here um there is an options to hide label so when i click over here it hides everything and you can change the layout horizontal or vertical but um, when i just uh, make it our height level or, or just um, enable the height you can also change the horizontal and vertical at as well but it's not necessary as of now let's reduce the content some here so that i can show you how the horizontal and vertical works it's horizontal layout and it's a vertical layout right sometimes we need to use we have to use horizontal and sometimes we have to use vertical as well now if i just scroll down you can see the icon position before and after and that's it for the general settings and if i go to style 
this is uh, this is the random size um, image or icon size you can change you can change the background size currently there is no background color if I add a background color here then you can understand how the background size work right as you can see it's working so you can change the border you can add border as well you can add border radius and then you can change the icon color and even I'm not using the border you can change the border color if you are using border and for level you can change the space between the icon and label and then scroll down here you can see the typography color and spacing so it's pretty simple and that's it now let's move into the next part I'm going to delete okay before delete this or before moving into the next part there is another thing that I would like to share with you the child icon or the individual icon list when I select individual icon list you can change the icon individually so let's say I'd like to use three icons here let's choose one and here let's select two and here let's select three you can change individually and you can change globally so when I change globally it will apply on every single icon and then when I change individually it only apply that specific icon so this is the global icon list and when I select icon it's only a specific icon and you can change from here you can add image as well you can add none so it's uh, previously there wasn't an options to add an image but right now you can use your custom image custom shape um, and a custom style now if I go to a style you can change the color icon and spacing only on the section not it's not applicable other uh, list item and that's it so now it's time to move into the next block item let's remove this one you can remove or you can press enter to add another one so I'm going to remove all of them from here by just selecting the icon list and then hit delete now click on the plus icon here again and take a look at here inline notice so inline notice is very useful and in most cases so when we are using or creating any blog post let's say I'm going to create a blog post uh, about how to start your blog and there are some related information and required uh, information so I'd like to uh, notice our user or my audience so you can easily use this notice block so require skills so you can add anything here you can add any kind of information here to add required skills so let's say for an example if I click over here let's say if we can add heading inside here or not so we cannot add heading here so what we can do we can add content here so we, we can add simply content here like this way so that's it and we can add as many as we want so I hope this uh, I cannot show you the real example as of now but it's useful and in many cases for affiliate website we have used um, this section and uh, this kind of block so if you take a look at the general settings here the layout is modern you can change it to border the border layout looks like this the modern is pretty different and I really like the modern and I use the modern layout in many I have in many websites I have used the modern one the alignment here and the title tag and notice display always so you can use dismissible so when someone click on the icon here it will dismiss uh, or disable the notice so currently it's a live view so I'm going to show you this is test on live view here so that you can understand click here and now it just disappear and this is how it works you can use all eyes show as well so when I use dismissible uh, you can use the icon size you can change the icon as well 
you can enable the cookie options as well show the cookie notice after one day or something like that so i really like this feature and if i go to style you can change the border color you can change the color padding typography content everything from here well that's it and now let's move into the next one i'm going to delete this one and here you can see the lottie animation when i select and drop the lottie animation there is two different way so so let's take a look at understand allows you to add lottie allows you to add a fancy animation lottie to your website you can see sample lottie animation here and you can upload you can um, download it from media library or you can insert from url so if i go to lottie website here you can take a look at here let's discover free ready to use animation and for an example i would like to use this one it's really funny so what i can do i can download this one as well but uh, i'm not going to uh, use my account as of now so i can download uh, as a gif file lottie json file and also mp4 so there are a couple of uh, different options here and let's take a look at here if is there any link options okay so if i want to use url i have to log it into my account let's log in my account and see how it looks and currently if i go to or discover any design so let's say for an example i would like to use this one and you can now here is the lottie animation url i can simply copy the url from here go to my website and insert the url that's it click on update and then reload the page so now this is how the lottie animation works isn't it beautiful i really like this uh, lottie animation they're very smooth and lightweight um there uh, is mainly there is json file so let's try the j if it's uh, if the json is acceptable or not and let's go to the design and download the json and let's say if it's acceptable or not so you cannot use the json here but you can use uh, another animation option so you can use gif file let's use gif and go to the editor again click on here and upload so now you can uh, use gif here but you cannot use the json somehow it's not displaying i'm not sure it's displaying here but not there let's try it again there might be uh, some bug or something like that but i'm not sure let's delete this one again and start from scratch click on update and reload the page and type here lottie and media library drop it here very strange again try it again okay from download and give file it's not displaying here so no worry there are a couple of other ways and we already know we can simply use this url and if you want you can customize the lottie animation as well i will create another video tutorial regarding the lottie that you can follow later on but i'm not going to spend so much time here as of now so you can currently use the url directly from here but if you want to use uh, your own lottie file your own branded color customized uh, image then you can do it also now uh, this is how the lottie works let's copy the url insert from url as of now and if i take a look at here there is a options for content and you can change the 
uh, speed you can change play on hover viewport you can change loop and everything you can change it from here you can change the reverse also as from here you can change the direction as well and if i go to style here you can see the weed and height okay and the background color the advance is similar to the other files that we have used and if i take a look at in general there is no other features let's reload the page here now as you can see it's uh, moving forward let's take a look at here if we can change it reverse direction and see in using reverse direction if it's working or not yes it's working <laughs> it's, it's very funny <laughs> okay uh, now uh, you can uh, play on default on hover on click so uh, it will be working now let's uh, move into the next block here i'm going to remove this one and see which one is the next one it's marketing button let's drag and drop it here the marketing button uh, is really useful and for landing page for affiliate sale and um, some other kind of um, marketing purpose we have used this uh, marketing button in many uh, ways let's select some presets here and as you can see the presets are so uh, useful here and this saves you a lot of time let's reset here i'm not going to use presets and if i select content and if i want to change the text here i can change this text i can change uh, the below content as well then if i go to content here you can see the content alignment which is basically the button alignment you can make it button uh, full weight as well and you can change the alignment here and the text alignment you can change it easily here if i do not want to show the descriptions you can simply hide it from here but uh, the purpose is to show the descriptions and i'd like to show the description here as well and for the heading you can change uh, h2 h1 uh, currently it's displaying as a span an icon you can always change the icon you can place it before after you can change the gap between the icon and also you can increase the icon size let's take a look at our styles and inside the style there is a bottom spacing and the typography descriptions so inside the heading you can change the typography you can change the color on hover and also the descriptions here you can change uh, the typography color and the icon you can change the background color it's not background it's a normal color you can change and the background you can change the background color to transparent color gradient the gradient has two options here currently and as we have seen a couple of other blogs they have custom gradient features but for the marketing button there is no custom gradient features you have to use only two colors as of now you can change the radial linear as well and the location change the location uh, for the gradient so i'm not going to explain here i'm not going to spend so much time inside the gradient let's take a look at the border you can simply change the border radius to 30 you can change it to style border you can add borders uh, as well and and let's say crop and it look like this so that's it and the spacing is also similar so that's it for the marketing button let's move into the next block and here you can see it's post carousel and there are a couple of other block item related to the post so post carousel post grid post timeline and those are related to post so before going to use those uh, block item i have to add some dummy post inside my website to do so i can 
post manually by clicking on post and add new i can do it manually but i can use a third party plugins for test purpose to add or generate random post here so that i do not have to spend so much time to add post manually so i can simply type here dummy post and then here you can see generate dummy posts and also uh, there are a couple uh, other options faker praise and faker press is also great so you can use any of them uh, based on your preference as of now i'd like to use the dummy post click activate go to settings and here you can see generate posts and you can add the number of posts that you'd like to generate so i'd like to use 12 post here click on generate And here you can see it's generated 12, 12 posts successfully. To use or insert or view the post, you can simply navigate to the posts. And here you can see all the posts are added here. You can view it from here. And it looks like this. The one thing that you'd, I, I think you have noticed that the URL is not displaying perfectly. It's displaying the post ID. To resolve this, I have to navigate to the settings and then navigate to permalinks. Change it plain to post name. Click save change. Simple. And now reload the page. And here you can see it's displaying the post title or the permalink. Now it's time to understand the post block. So if I go to or first of all, I have to click on update here and reload the page. Now if I click on the plus icon, scroll down, here you can see the post carousel. So post carousel is very useful uh, carousel feature. So if I drag and drop it here, if you understand any of them from here that is related to post, let's say if you have good knowledge in post carousel then you can also apply the same knowledge on post timeline on post grid as well so let's focus on first post carousel and i'll move into the next one the carousel looks like this so there are some presets here if i also click on here you can see it only contains with a carousel there is nothing else i'm going to remove the above paragraph here as of now and inside the carousel you can um, take a look at the presets the first presets it looks like this here you can choose the second presets it looks like this you can select third one it looks like this and the fourth one so now we have just uh, take our four presets and the possible presets here so now it's time to customize our own uh, carousel block item from here let's now navigate to the general inside the general first of we'll take a look at here the text alignment you can easily align your content or text here and if you take a look at here the post type you can display the pages as well but as of now i'm going to display the post here the taxonomy if you want to display any specific category you can choose the specific category from here also if you want to display any specific tags then you can choose the tags and then you can add specific tags or the taxonomy from here but now i'm like to use category and the category is selecting all here that means all the category all the post category will be displaying here now if i take a look at here exclude current post so what does it mean the current post is currently if i just take a look at here there is some post here so when i click exclude it will change the current post so i'm not sure exactly how it's work but uh, we'll look around later on the post per page currently it's displaying four post per page you can change it to five two or three as of uh, uh, as many as you want and offset starting post if i change it here it will just 
take a look at here if you take a look at it, this offset will skip the number of posts set and will use the next post as the starting posts so if you want to use any specific post or starting from anywhere then here you can change it to the offset okay it's not working from here i have to take a look at, uh, at the front end but i'm not going to change it as of now and here you can see offset starting i'm not going to use order you can order the post by title or date or random or even menu order so you can order you can choose four different options from here and also you can order ascending and descending as well let's you can change the column to four column you can change it three column okay so i'm not sure exactly why this error appearing here let's reload the page again and there is an auto save if i restore the auto save i can simply click over here and restore this auto save and here you can see it's uh, displaying our auto save options now I scroll down and general inside here we can change order by Okay, somehow the appearance is changing here. Uh, let's click on the update and reload the page and see what kind of issue is this. Yes, it's now working. And equal height, which is very important. And as of now, if you take a look at here, the height is not equal. If you take a look closely, uh, there are a few posts that doesn't have equal height. Okay, let's increase the column. I can show you. Now, as you can see, the height is not equal, right? So if I select equal height from here and click on update and reload the page and also reload here, as you can see, uh, the height is not equal. Yes, it's equal now. So it just takes some time. Uh, I think it might be a caching issue or a server issue here. So it's displaying uh, on an equal height here. Now, if you take a look at here again, scroll down, general settings, and we have just completed this one. If there is no post, you can change the display, no post found. I'd like to use two column. if you take a look at the next tab here which is called carousel you can change the carousel pause on hover autoplay you can increase the speed let's say if i use four and this is four thousand that means four seconds and if i use one So you can see it's changing very quickly now the transition speed you can uh, make it it's an it's a millisecond um, not second sorry it's a millisecond value and here you can see uh, there is arrow and dot or type currently if i click on update and take a look at here there is arrow and dot both of the uh, navigation is available you can use only arrow you can use only dot as well let's say you would like to use only arrow and i'm going to change the autoplay to 2000 millisecond here and for the image show featured image you can change the featured image size as well position you can place it uh, at the background you can place it top so let's add background and content area you can add the content here as well if i use the image at the background here you can see the uh, line link complex box so that means it will uh, link the complete box that all the box uh, the complete box will be linkable so if i reload the page here here you can see i can click anywhere it, it will take you or it will take me to the exact post right and i'm going to disable this one 
so content area there is a content show title author and a date let's uh, you can hide any of them from here. i'm not going to hide or display anything else here as of now and you can increase the excerpt the number of uh, word that you can increase here and for the read more button you can show read more button or you can disable the read more button as well so i'd like to display the read more button and for the text you can change the read more button text here as well now if i go to a style there is one thing that is very important okay let's reduce the image um, or change the image position to the top and go to style and here you can see the column gap is 20 pixels between the item here and you can change the background color as well let's change it and then inside the layout there is column gap there is a padding if i add 40 pixel or 30 pixel top okay let's make it linkable so now 30 pixel padding is added inside the content area let's go to title change the title to h1 h2 whatever you want you can change it from here meta it's similar excerpt similar there is nothing to change and now click on read more link you can change the read more uh, button link here there is a presets and you can change it easily you can use presets and the image you can increase the bottom spacing here and the arrow and dots you can change the arrow and dot size color let's increase the size here and currently here is the visible the arrow is now visible i can increase the size i can increase the border or add border as well and you can add the border radius as well it's increase the distance here i can place it inside the content area i can make it outside the content area let's place it inside the content area click update and reload the page here now it's displaying inside the content area go to the editor again and that's it there is advanced options and it's similar to any other advanced options you already know that now let's move into the next one now let's take a look at here so i'd like to keep this one as of now because the post all the post uh, item or po related to the post is similar let's take a look at post grid here and here you can see the post grid looks like this and if you take a look at here closely inside the general setting the post grid has the same features like the post carousel there is no difference here at all so inside the general tab if you take a look at image this is the same features here and when i select background it looks like this and also you can change the content uh, information here as well read more now if i go to the style here you can see there is a uh, except the carousel there is everything you can increase decrease the width here and the important thing or not important the interesting thing that i'd like to share the content padding so you can create this kind of post beautifully with just adding padding or in uh, additional padding on the top here so as you can see it just changed the layout it's it's really uh, displaying more catchy here and you can also change the title meter and other information you can change it from here easily so i'm not going to spend so much time the additional thing is box shadow so if i click anywhere here you can see the box shadow is appearing let's click here it's displaying here the box shadow and when i add box shadow on hover you can see on hover there is a box shadow and i hope you can uh, view this uh, as of now here i'm not going to use the box shadow right now 
and here you can the it, this is the um, element or the information related to the box shadow blur spread uh, vertical and position as well and that's it for the post you can change um, any kind of information okay let's make it more minimal go to the content and hide the date comment and that's it show the meta icon and show excerpt you can uh, use this simpler version as well you can also uh, deactivate the button here and make the full uh, image clickable you can simply uh, do it when i click show the read more button i just make it disappear and here you can see it looks like this right and it looks uh, perfect here but if you want you can use the read more button here as well and uh, you can change the uh, content structure as well from here easily now let's move into the next one the next one is post timeline and post timeline is also similar if i drag it and drop it here so if you are familiar or uh, if you watch the timeline um, video and the post timeline is similar to that above timeline here the content timeline so if you are understand the content timeline then you can also understand the post timeline it's uh, similar but there is some additional information related to the post here inside the general you can see uh, let's only let me share with you the additional information so there is image content uh, which is the additional information i can disable the image i can enable the image i can change the image size to large medium or any size that you would like to display here and here you can see the content area then the connector so basically it's exactly same like the timeline a content timeline here just it added some content like it added image button and some other features and it's exactly the same it comes with exactly similar information related to the content timeline so if you understand the content timeline you can understand this one as well so here is uh, the button spacing the cta which is call to action you can change the date color you can change the author information you can change the heading information as well the one thing that when i click on layout here you can change the layout and when i click on content here you can see there is some limitation for the content you can only display the author and the post date and you cannot display other information like the post grid so inside the post grid and carousel uh, there is some additional information inside the content area but currently you cannot add additional information like comments and uh, tag category here on inside the uh, post timeline so that's only the limitation the difference here and let's remove all the tab from here because i'm not going to use uh, the post timeline now if i click on the plus icon here you can see the price list and the price list is basically let me show you how it works so drag and drop it here so when uh, basically it's useful when we are going to create any restaurant website and for the restaurant website we have to use this price list or there are some kind of other ways that you can customize and use the price list but as of now if uh, you want to use a price list then uh, i personally use in most cases on a, a menu item for a restaurant or a product a menu item for any online restaurant or any restaurant website now i can change the view easily from here it's really awesome so there are a couple of other things that i would like to share with you now when i select any presets from here i can reset it as well so i can select presets and see when i select image here you can see that for the common styling options please select the parent block of this price list so they clearly mention that if you want to change any specific uh, settings then you have to select the parent block but for changing the images you can simply click on individual block item and change the image let's change
and then change this one now just change our image and if i want to use or want to add additional menu i can simply click here um click on the plus icon uh, okay this one selected and click on the plus icon here you can see the additional menu item and when i select and click on the plus icon you can see additional menu item you can remove this one as well by clicking here now if i just click on list item here you can see the price list let's remove the unnecessary paragraph from here and inside when i select the price list you can see all the style general and other information related to the price list let's take a look at general here you can see the two column you can increase the column you can make it three column you can make it one column so let's choose two column and for the image you can change the image position side to top you can change side you can change the alignment here and stuck you can stack on tablet and mobile devices the vertical alignment is middle you can place it top and middle and the width of the image looks like this so that's it for image and if i go to style you can change the color of the title you can change the uh, typography and this is basically for the title you can change the typography you can change the bottom margin let's increase a little bit and separator so you can increase the separator thickness you can change the separator color you can change image padding and let's take a look at the content you can easily change the content color from here let's take a look at pricing and i was looking for these options so basically the pricing is very important it's not highlighted by default so you can use uh, increase the font size you can uh, make the font weight bold you can change the color easily to any highlighted color and now it looks like this so i would like to change the font size a little bit lower and that's it so if you want to change the content here you can select the specific item here you can remove the text you can write down the text here as well this is sample text and let's change it to 19 and now this is how it works let's select the price list again here and take a look at the spacing this is basically the row gap and the column gap so between the column you have to add some spacing and this is how it works and the item padding here if you take a look at here i'd like to add 15 pixel and if i increase and decrease you can understand the item padding here as well so that's all for the price list now let's remove the price list from here and start taking another item so now let's take a look at our review tab so if you take a look at here and read closely it seems that the following fields are empty this may generate schema error warning for your page we recommend you to fill this field first so missing merchant information and other information please note that this is is notice is visible only to the editor well so you can add information related to the uh, review here and user can add a review as well so currently i'm not going to add a review here as of now but i'd like to share with you the style and settings here so if you want to use schema support so schema support is very important and there i will have a complete separate series tutorial regarding the schema support hopefully um, that will be very helpful for you now if i want to remove the schema support it will be just uh, remove the warning as well show review descriptions you can disable enable the descriptions and other information show author you can disable all of them and even you can add a link as well for the schema setup you can change the schema information so you can choose 
the item type to product book course or movie or software or application and you can um, review the publisher so you can change the data publish as well and brand SKU identifier so it's great features for schema and for service type website or any other product review or any other review type blog post it's very helpful to rank and display data on Google in a different way now let's remove okay so here you can see the price valid uh, till so you can also um, insert the price valid you can display other information as well let's enable them from here and if you take a look at here you can change alignment I already show you here and for the images you can change the image size you can change the image uh, thumbnail to medium to full width as well now if I go to style here you can change the color typography description author content so I think you already have an idea how the style works and hopefully you can change it later on now it's time to move into the next block so here you can see uh, the next one is social share you can add social share easily here so if you want to add social share inside uh, before the post or under the post you can easily add social share previously we had to use social share uh, to using a third-party plugin but as of now if you're using a spectra you do not have to use any third-party plugin now if I click on content here you can see the alignment and you can stack on desktop tablet or mobile devices I'm going to select none and you can change the alignment as well so that's it there is nothing fancy nothing so special things here it's very simple and straightforward now let's move into the next one on the next block here which is table of contents and basically the table of contents is a useful block and if you are not familiar with this then let me share with you if I go to the WP Astra then slash docs or you can let's click on block and this is uh, something like uh, let's click on spectra block and let's take a look at here if is there any table of content here or not so currently there is no options for table of content as of now but uh, if I go to the blog here you can see take a look at here if is there any table of content here okay there is no table of content on this post and yes here is the things uh, covered in the article this is the table of content if I click over here it will take me to the exact place and this is very useful if I click uh, this uh, headline or list item here it will take me to the exact place where it, it's described in a nice way and hopefully you understand how the table of content works and currently we do not have any content here and that's why the table of contents looks like a blank and there is nothing to share here and when I create a live project uh, I will describe you in detail way so if I select content you can change the content alignment title alignment and it's simple you can select bullet number let's remove the below item so that I can show you exactly so there is no content inside the page that's why it's displaying here blank okay so that's it for table of content uh, I'm going to close this one it's very simple and hopefully you can change it now let's move into the next one 
the tabs tabs is very useful and uh, I think I should share with you something related to the tabs so inside the tabs here you can see when I select the list item inside tabs there is tabs child and you have to understand when I click here there is other information inside the tabs child now first of all if I click on tab you can take a look at here there is some preacher presets the first one looks like this the second one looks like this and here is the third one the most interesting part inside the tab if I click on the plus icon then I can add anything here let's say I would like to use paragraph I would like to use a button even I can use container as well okay somehow my keyboard is not what yes it's working now so I can type here button I can add this one as well so you can add literally anything let's click on update and reload the page here now my tab first one is looks like this if I click second tab it looks like this so the interesting part is you can customize this in inner area using any kind of block you can use container you can use flexbox you can use whatever you want so that's why i really like the tab and in many cases we have to use uh, this kind of features uh, we have to use um, additional information inside our tab now let's go back to our settings or list item here and i have added a couple of tab child here okay a new tab i can simply press here i can simply delete this one or i can change the position as well it's great well now if i go to tab one and select the tabs here you can see the layout there are a couple of other layers that you can also change horizontal style one two three okay let's delete it again and insert the tab okay now let's change the style to four five so it's almost uncountable style that you can use and the presets and the style you can use also from here I really like the tab from their styles and a pre-built style as well you can change the tabs title the tabs is tab 1 you can change the tab 1 alignment uh, to left right and initial open is tab 1 you can change the initial open is tab 2 but uh, as of now I didn't add any content here it's hard to understand how it looks or how it works the initial open let's add an image here let's choose tab 1 and add image and this is a uh, image inside the tab one <coughs> now if I go to tabs again and here you can see initial open tab one if I select tab two that means when I go to any page initially it opens tab 2 let's update and reload the page here now as you can see it the tab 2 is selected initially and when I select tab 1 it will display the image but when I select tab 2 it looks like this now let's go back to our alignment here you can change the text alignment you can change the content alignment and let's change the style um, it's making confusion it's make me confused so this is how it works you can use icon as well 
let's choose one two so here you can see you can change the icon for the tab change the icon position right top and bottom as well so now if i go to a style here you can see the title which is the first one inside the title there is color typography padding and below is the icon you can increase the icon size you can increase the spacing and here is the body the body has text color background color margin padding and here is border so it's useful and this is how the tab works okay so there is nothing uh, so fancy there is nothing to describe here so as of now this is how the tab works now if i delete this one and move into the next block which is taxonomy the taxonomy list is basically a list of categories and taxonomies uh, but currently we have only one category which is called uncategorized and that's why it looks like this if we increase the category let's add some more category from post categories let's add software okay let's add wordpress theme and then wordpress plugin and go to all post add some post into those category and reload the page now as you can see it looks like this so i think you are familiar with the layout if i go to the documentation here knowledge base and here you can see the layout and this is the exact layout that we are using here so we can click on categorize or uncategorize it will take us to the exact page or the category page so currently uh, we can change the style as well if i reload the page here select it and then here you can see the queries posts you can show empty taxonomy so if is there any empty categories you can display here and you can disable the post count as well let's take a look at the layout here you can see the grid layout list layout and you can change the column to one column and you can also use this same uh, block inside your widget area now you can change it to list grid or alignment easily if i go to a style here you can see there are a few options for a style let's click on typography it's similar to any other style there is typography color and count so you can change the count as well let's make it red you can change the count typography which is uh, the additional features here if i go to background change the background color to any uh, prefer color or any of our branding color you can change it and you can add border you can add box shadow as well a light box shadow let's change the view first three column here now it looks much better so it's not better i'm not going to show you how to create a better uh, layer as of now i'm not going to show you uh, this now if i go to style again and we are inside the box shadow we are now if i go to spacing it's similar to any other spacing options that we have used or we're using so that's it if i go to 
blocks and let's take a look at our, our next block here the next one is team so basically the team is a team member area i can choose i can change the layout i can select the presets easily here so let's choose any presets or you can remove it from here if i click on layout to understand you have to understand the layout so i'm going to add an image here and here you can see it adds some other information like alignment and title tag then you can change the image position left or right so if i add the image position left it looks like this you can change the image style to circle square so if i select circle it looks like this and basically the team member position uh, should display in this way i can change the image width as well change the image quality to medium or full somehow the image is just change the aspect ratio i'm not sure well now there is a couple of other things uh, okay let's create a container add a team member i'm going to delete this one team and select presets from here duplicate couple of times and go to container change flex direction row here and this is how it works now if i select any team member here and go to style i can change the title color to red and then typography or anything i can change here and let's change specific things here and now if i want i can copy and apply all of them here i can simply copy style select and paste style again i can paste style this is how it works now it's time to move into the next one so if i click on the plus icon here here you can see the last one is testimonial so there is a the testimonial carousel so you all know that there is no default carousel inside um, the elementor or any other page builder but here you can see aspector comes with a default carousel inside um, the testimonial area so i personally like this uh, carousel features here okay i'm going to place it at the bottom area let's remove this one i'm not going to <laughs> interrupt with the team member and you can change the testimonial item here as well it's it's very useful and if you are familiar with the post carousel then you can change certain thing inside the testimonial which is similar to the post carousel now if i go to a style or general here you can see image you can add image here as well but if i take a look at general there is no presets for the testimonial but let's add some image here so there is three testimonial and i have added three images here and as you can see those three images are appearing here perfectly so if i want i can simply increase the testimonial i can simply click on here and here you can see uh, inside the general you, we 
we can easily increase the number of testimonial to four five six seven or uh, as many as we want so there is no child item but you can increase this in this way and you can simply change the content here you can change the name here by just selecting here and start typing here so this is how it works now if i go to column i can increase the column as well let's decrease the number here change alignment left right make it equal height the equal height is very important and for the images change left top or you can change it bottom you can change it to left you can change it to right so inside a free version of the spectra they have added so many features and it comes with all the necessary features that are useful for any user or creating any website so you can change a carousel and also you can change the auto speed and some other things that you are familiar with a carousel post carousel now if i go to style you can change it from name here you can change the color typography and margin bottom inside the content it's similar the company is similar image similar there is nothing uh, additional features so you are already familiar with all the features from here so that's all for today now i'm going to remove all of them Congratulations, you have just completed the Aspectra Block Editor Overview and that's it for today. In our next video or next series tutorial, I'll be creating a complete project using the Aspectra. That will help you to understand how Aspectra work on real life project and also that will boost your experience on Block Editor. So if you are new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. I already said that. But uh, I highly appreciate uh, your support and uh, your feedback on this channel. Have a good day. Bye.